Kraken and Tubbs get involved with Miami's gubernatorial race and discover both candidates are equally appalling on today's Miami Vice. Vote of Confidence was written by John Shulian and directed by Randy Roberts. We've entered the dreary back half of season four, and while this isn't a bad episode, it's just hard to get excited about anything that happens in it. Vice conducts a raid on a train operating as a mobile brothel. Crockett busts one of the Johns, who turns out to be a well-regarded gubernatorial candidate named Tom Pierce, who is played by Larry Pine, who's built a nice career appearing in films by directors like Louis Maul, Woody Allen, and Wes Anderson. Pierce's campaign manager puts pressure on Vice to release Pierce, and the district attorney, who is a contributor to Pierce's campaign, informs Crockett and Tubbs that she won't proceed with a case against him. At the raid, Switek had taken surveillance photos of one of Pierce's campaign workers, a man named Barry Bloom, played by Barry Lynch. Bloom, who has a long history of dirty campaign tricks, meets with a madam named Angelica Payson, played by Shelley Birch. Angelica is a supporter of Pierce's political opponent, Cowan. She and Bloom are both secretly working to sabotage Pierce to ensure that Cowan is elected. While Stand and Deliver by Mr. Mr. Plays, Crockett and Tubbs meet with a reporter named Hank Frazier, played by Jonathan Hadry, who has published a series of articles about Pierce's campaign. He smuggles Crockett and Tubbs into a press conference, at which Pierce, flanked by his loyal wife Annie, played by Lucinda Jenny, places the blame for his arrest on overzealous Miami cops and confirms that he's very much still in the race. Tubbs and Crockett then visit retired politician Grover Watkins, Pierce's former ally turned adversary, who tips them off that Pierce has been receiving large campaign contributions from suspicious dummy corporations. Right before another scheduled press conference, Pierce meets privately with Frazier, then takes the stage and unexpectedly announces that he's dropping out of the race. He then completely disappears from public view, sparking rumors that he killed himself. Meanwhile, Frazier, the journalist, accepts a payment of 10 grand from Pierce's opponent Cowan for his role in getting Pierce to withdraw from the election. Fraser then meets with Angelica and demands that she give him incriminating material on Cowan, whom he wants to blackmail in the same manner he was blackmailing Pierce. Angelica refuses and he grows violent with her. Later, Bloom discovers Angelica's strangled corpse in her bathtub and is arrested for her murder. While insisting on his innocence, Bloom tells Crockett and Tubbs that there were several members of Pierce's campaign, himself included, who were secretly working for Cowan. He also mentions that Fraser was being paid by Cowan to publish unflattering stories on Pierce. Crockett and Tubbs talk with Fraser's newspaper editor who tells them about Fraser's significant gambling debts. Later, Fraser calls Crockett to confess to murdering Angelica and to mention that he's about to be murdered by angry bookies for failing to repay his gambling debts. Sure enough, muscle-bound thugs break into his home while he's still on the phone with Crockett, and by the time Crockett and Tubbs arrive, Fraser is already dead. With his blackmailer, fortuitously and entirely coincidentally murdered, Pierce emerges out of his self-imposed exile and announces that he's re-entering the gubernatorial race. My overriding complaint about season three was that a large percentage of episodes seemed like episodes of a pretty good cop show, but not necessarily good episodes of Miami Vice, in that they failed to feature any of the elements that made this show so striking and unconventional early on, such as stylized visuals juxtaposed against themes of unstoppable corruption and constant danger. For the most part, season four has avoided that trap simply in that the episodes have gotten a little looser and stranger, but this episode kind of falls into that same rut. It's not a bad episode, but there's nothing particularly memorable about it, and it pulls its punches. I could make a case for either two or three flamingos for this one, but I'm gonna go with two just because I think it needed to try harder. Next time, Crockett and Tubbs investigate an unfathomably corrupt weapon smuggling police chief. I hope to meet you back here for that. Until then, please subscribe to my channel or chat with me on Twitter about this show, and I will see you here then.